In this lecture, we're going to systematically investigate two contact circuits. And by systematically investigate, uh, we mean that we're going to look at all possible two contact circuits, right? This would be something where you would have output Y would be some function of two inputs, say A and B. But right, A and B are, are binary variables. They're zeros, zero or one, and likewise Y is. So the behavior of this circuit, any circuit of this form, will be fully specified by just filling out a truth table. Like so. We'll put all possible combinations of A and B, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And then we just fill in the various values of Y. All right? So that was what the truth table would look like. And the different truth tables, the different functions, the different two contact functions, right? two contacts, because these inputs here would be like the switches or what we call contacts in an industrial environment. The only difference would be what these different values of Y would be. Now, how many possible truth tables of this form could there be? Well, for each one of these question marks, we could have a zero or a one. That would be two different values. So we would have two values for the first one, possibilities, and for the next one, times two, times two, times two. One, two, three, four factors of two, and two to the fourth is what? It's 16. So there are 16 possible two contact truth tables. So we want to go through and look at this kind of a, of a function systematically. Look at all of these 16 possibilities. So we're going to start with the simple case where we have zero one values or the inverse of that, four one values. No one values or all one values. So let's look at that. That case, so we'd have here A, B, Y, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 1 values. That means they'd be all zeros, right? So it would look like this, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that's pretty easy to write down what that function is. It's y is equal to 0. Uh, the coil is always off. So we've got these two uh, switches or, or contacts. And regardless of how we set those, on or off, doesn't affect the output. The coil y is always off. It's just disengaged. They're not even connected together. So it just, the thing is just unplugged. Now, then the inverse of that, where we would have four ones, that would be, now we would just take this same truth table put all our possible values here and now invert this so we have all four ones okay so what is that function well that's pretty easy to figure out too that's just y is equal to one y is always one here y is always zero there all right so those are pretty trivial logic functions, if we look at a ladder diagram for those circuits, they would look something um, like this. In the first case, we would just have something that would look like, say, like this. And uh, here would be our coil. And there's just simply no connection. This is our Y. And so y is always equal to zero. There's, there's no way that current can flow because the A and the B, they're somewhere else in the circuit. They're not even connected in, uh, in series or parallel or in any way with the, the coil y. And for y equals one, well, that's just the case where the coil is just hardwired on like this. So that's, this is y is equal to zero, and this is y is equal to one. So those are kind of trivial circuits. So now let's look at less trivial circuits. Let's look at the case where we have a single 
one value, or the inverse of that would be three. Because right, if you have a single one value, then you have three zeros, and if you invert that, then you get three ones, and one zero. So let's represent this now to save space. We'll just make one truth table with several output possibilities. So we'll have here y0, y1, y2, and y3. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. All right, so we can, we're going to have one, a single one value. So the one value could be here, or it could be in this row, or it could be in this row, or it could be in this row. And then all the other entries would be zero. So here are the four possibilities. Right? If I can just put a single one in, in one of these four rows, then there are four different possibilities. It can be in any one of the four rows. Now, we can look over here at this last column, and we can recognize that. That's something we've seen before. That's, so there's a 1, only when A is 1 and B is 1. That is, so that would tell you that Y3 is equal to A and B. Now, the other columns, we can use the same idea, but also include the not operation. Right? So, for example, um, we can write let's say uh, y2 here. So that's equal to 1 when a is 1 and b is 0. So that would be a and not b. All right? For this to be 1, this has to be 1 and that has to be 1. So a has to be 1 and not b has to be 1. But if not b is equal to 1, then b is the inverse of 1 is equal to 0. So, y2 is 1 if a is 1 and b is 0. a is 1 and b is 0, then y2 is equal to 1. How about y1? Same idea. Here we go, and we want this row uh, to have the output be equal to 1. Well, this would be when a is 0 and b is 1. So, a is 0, so a prime is 1, and b is 1. All right, so, again here, a prime is equal to 1 means a is equal to 0. So this is 1 when a prime is 1 and b is 1. And a prime is 1 when a is 0. So a is 0 and b is 1. And then what about y0? So y0 is 1 when a is 0 and b is 0. So we can write that as, well, a prime is 1 and b prime is 1 when a is 0 and b is 0. Okay, so there are the logic functions corresponding to the three different possibilities when we have a single one value in the truth table in the output there. Now, if we just invert those, and uh, let's see, I'm probably going to need another page for this. If we simply invert those, right, so just change all the ones to zeros and all the zeros to one, then what we get is a b y zero y one y two y three zero 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 one one zero one one all right so we're going to now invert this so it's going to be zero one 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 0, 1, 1, 1, and then the next one will be 1, 0, 1, 1, and then the next one will be, will be 1, 1, 0, 1, and the final one will be 0, sorry, 1, 1, 1, 0. All right, so here we just looked at the four different ways you could have a single 1 in this output column, and for the inversion of that, we look at the four different ways you could have a single, single 0. 
Now, what would these 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 expressions be? Well, for example, the if we look at this, the uh, the y zero in this case would just be the inversion of the y zero in this case, and so that y zero was not a and not b. So this would be not a and not b, and that whole thing inverted. So not not a and not b. How about y1? Okay, so we just go through and just, well, uh, y1 is going to be no, the inversion of not a and b. So, not a and b inverted, and y2, that's y1, y2 is going to be a and not b inverted, a and not b inverted, and finally y3 in this case is going to be the previous y3, a and b, and that's going to be inverted. So a and b inverted. Okay, so that's one way to write these four different truth tables where you have a single zero and three ones, right? Which is just the inversion of the case where you have a single one and three zeros. This has a lot of, lots of inversions here, and there's a different way we can write this. For example, let's look at, uh, at y0. So y0 is 0 only when a is 0 and b is, is 0. If either a or b, or both, are 1, then y0 is 1. Well, that's the or operation. All right, that should be then a or b. Right, so the only time A or B is zero is if both A and B are zero. A is zero, B is zero, then A or B is zero. Otherwise, it's one. And we could do a similar thing for the other columns. So here, you're going to have zero only when A is zero and B is one. Well, we can write that as A or not B. That's going to only be, that will only be zero when, when A is zero and not B is zero. Okay, so that would mean A is zero and not B is zero means B is one. So A is zero and B is one. A is zero, B is one, and you get a zero. Otherwise, you get one. How about Y2? It's here, so you're going to get zero only when A is one and B is zero. A is one and B is zero. So that's going to be not A or B. That's going to be zero um, only when a is equal to one, so not a is zero, and b is equal to zero. So zero or zero in that special case gets you zero for all other possible values of a and b. You're going to get a one, and then finally for y three, that's going to be zero only when a is one and b is one. That's the only time it's going to be zero. So that would be not a or not B. All right, so this is zero. All right, the OR operation is only zero when both of the operands are zero. So not A is zero and not B is zero. But if not A is zero, then A is one. And if not B is zero, then B is one. So when A is one and B is zero, you get a zero. And for all other possible values, you get a one. Now, by the way, this demonstrates the fact that there can be multiple ways to express a logic function, right? So here's two logic functions that are equal. Right? Different ways to express the same truth table. Which one should we use? Well, you may look at this and maybe you think that these OR operations are simpler. Um, it depends. And especially when you start talking about using actual integrated circuits to implement these electronically, then it may come down to what kind of logic gates you have available. Maybe you have, uh, you don't have any or gates, but you have and and not gates, and you could do all these with just and and not gates, and here you'd need not gates for the primes, and then you'd need or gates, right? So you have a choice, and which one is the best choice depends on the circumstances.
Now let's look at the number of ways we can have two one values. Of course, if we have two one values and there are four total values, then that means we also have two zero values. So two one values. Well, let's list all the possible ways we can do that. A, B, Y zero, Y one, and we'll continue filling out this, this table here. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So let's have the two one values be in the first two rows and then two zeros. We could have the first uh, row be a one, then a zero, and then a one, and then a zero. Let's see, we can continue with this idea. Y2, we could have one and two zeros and then a one. That's all the ways we can have a one in the first row and then another one in one of the other three rows. Then we could have three ways that we could have a zero in the first row. Because we have a zero in the first row and say two ones and then a zero, or a zero and a one and a zero and a one or a zero and a zero and a one, one. And if you look at that carefully, those are the only ways that we can have two ones and two zeros in a column. All the possibilities are exhausted by that. So there are six different logic uh, true tables, and hence logic functions, which have two one values. So how are we going to uh, describe this? Well, let's look at y zero. Y0 is 1 here and there. So it's 1 if we're in this row or if we're in this row, and otherwise it's 0. So it sounds like this would be something we would use an OR operation to get this row or this row. And then to be in a single row, we've already seen how to do that. We'd have to write a, an AND function that turns on is equal to 1 only for these values of A and B. So this would be not A and not B. A is 0 and B is 0. So not a it would be one and not b would be one so that would give us this one here right and in fact that's just the right that's just this y zero here that we did up here where we have a single one but now we have to have a second one and the second one is here in this second row a is zero and b is one so not a and not b or a is 0, so not A is 1, and B is 1, so not A and B. And let's just continue on like that. So for Y1, we've got the same, the first row, which, which is not A and not B. And then the third row, where A is 1 and B is 0, so that's A and B is 0, so not B is 1. And now y2, we've got the first row, so that's not a, and not b. Or, here in the fourth row, when a is 1 and b is 1, so that's, or a is 1 and b is 1. Okay, so that's how we could express those first three uh, functions, the first three columns here. Now let's go to the y3. What happens with y3? Let's see. So we're going to have a 1 when we're in the second row. That's when a is 0 and b is 1. So a is 0, then not a is 1, and b is 1. Okay, so that gets us that 1. Or we're in this third row, right? And so that's down here in this third row. That's when a is 1 and b is 0. So a is 1, so a, and b is 0, so not b is 1. And let's go to Y4, this column. Let's see, the rows where we have a 1 are the second row. A is 0, so that's not A is 1, and B is 1. So not A and B. And then we've got the last row here. A is 1, and B is 1. So that's A and B. And then finally, 
the last column. And we've got the last two, the, the third and the fourth rows here. That's where we get the ones. A is 1 and B is 0. So A and B is 0, so not B is 1. Or in the next row, A is 1 and B is 1. So A and B. All right, so there are all of the log logic functions when we have two ones and two zeros. Now, in some of these cases, for example, let's look at this y5 expression. A and not B, or A and B, this, these both have a factor of A. So we can write this as A and not B or B. I'm just factoring there, not B or B. Okay, so that's A, and well, B or not B, that's always true, because if B is 1, then B is 1, and you got 1 or 0 is 1, and if B is 0, then B is 0, and not B is 1, you got 1 or, uh, or 0. So this is A and B or not B, that's just 1. And of course, that's just A. A and 1 is just A. That's true when A is true. If A is 1, then 1 and 1 is true. If A is 0, 0 and 1 is false. All right, so that's a great simplification. So Y5 is just the function A, which is really a one-contact function. It tells you that the, the B contact, the B switch, has no effect on that circuit. You can implement the circuit simply by Y5 is equal to A. It's just a, it just can be implemented as a one-contact circuit. All right. Now, this means if we were to take this expression, A and not B, or A and B, and implement that directly, it would look something like this. So we would have... Yeah, let's, let's do it in terms of contacts. So it'd be A, A and not B. Okay, so not is the normally closed type of contact. Okay, so we'd write this as here's B. And so with that slash, that means it actually implements not B, it's the inverse. Okay, so A and not B, or, so or means they're in parallel, so we come down here, and we've got A and B. So and is the two contexts that are in series. And we've got A and B. And then that's our, that's our coil Y there. So that's a direct implementation of this formula we worked out by just looking at the truth table. But then we went through and did some factoring and some simplification, and we saw that we can write this simply as y5 is equal to a. Let's, let's see why that is true over here. Certainly, if a is 0, that means this contact is open and that contact is open, then there's no way for current to flow because these are both open. If A is equal to 1, well, then both of these contacts are closed. And then if B is 1, this contact is also closed, so you have a path here for current to flow. Or if B is 0, then this contact is closed because it's normally closed. And so current can flow that way. So B has no effect, ultimately, on the value of Y. It just depends on A. If A is 1, then Y will be 1. And if A is 0, y, uh, y here, which actually is, we're calling it Y5, will be 0. So we could just implement this much simpler, like so. It's one of our basic single contact circuits. Here's Y5, and that's A. Well, this is a much simpler circuit than that. So if I was going to build this, I'd rather build this than that. Okay, fewer components simpler, probably lower cost, etc. This illustrates the idea of what we call logic function minimization.
this is a huge topic in logic circuits because if you're going to actually build these things, well, you're going to need more components over here than you are over here. So we'd rather use fewer components generally, lower cost, less area, lower power, etc. So we can have two logic functions that give you the same truth table, but one is minimized. One requires fewer logic operations. So usually we want to do that minimization. All right, now, we can do a similar thing if we look up here. Let's see. So in this y0, you notice we can factor out an a prime, a not a. could be factored out, and that would leave then not b or b. Okay? And we said not b or b is equal, to, is equal to 1. So that would be not a and 1. So this would just be not a. And by the same logic we went through here. Uh, next row, we've got a common B prime, not B. Can factor that out. So we've got not B and not A or A. And not A or A is 1. Always true. Right? If A is, is, is on, then, then on or off is, is on. Uh, if A is off, then off or on is, is on. So this thing will just be not B. Uh, let's see, let's go look at y4 here. We've got a common factor of b. Pull that out, and then you've got b and a or not a. a or not a is 1, so this is b and 1, which is just b. So of these six different possibilities, four of them are trivial in the sense that they're simply a single contact circuit, or at least they can be reduced to a single contact circuit. Right, in this case, the B uh, contact really plays, has no effect on whether the Y0 is on or off. Only the A does. Now these two here, these you can't do that. They don't have a common factor. It's not A and not B or A and B. Here's not A and B or A and not B. So there's no common factor here. So these can't be reduced. So these are truly two contact circuits. So we see that there really are, as far as a two contact circuit that has only two one values and two zero values, there are really only two non-trivial versions of that, that, these two right here. And at four of these six really are only, can be reduced down to a single contact circuit. So to summarize, if we have zero one values or four one values, then we just get really a trivial circuit. Y is zero or Y is one, and the contacts have no effect uh, on the coil. The coil is either unconnected or it's hardwired and always on, either always off and always on. If we have a single one value or three, well, then we get these different AND operations. Uh, where either A or B may, or, or both, may be inverted. So we may have A and B, or A and not B, and so on. All right? So that's with a single one. Or with a single zero and three ones, kind of with the inverse of those different operations, we just invert those and operations. But then we also showed we could also do it with or, different or operations. So different ways we can write logic functions. We have a choice, and some of those ways to write them may be more convenient for us. Then we went to two one values, and of course that would leave two zero values. And we saw that of the six different possibilities, four of them were trivial in the sense that they reduced to a single contact circuit. And the two remaining ones gave us these important operations, the exclusive OR, XOR, or the X nor, all right, so the exclusive or. A or B is exclusively one, meaning the other one is zero. And then X nor is just the inverse of that. Now we're gonna look at a way to understand these types of reductions that we did here by doing this factoring. All right, so Let's take a look at that. Let's look at, for example, this truth table. A, B, 
and the case where we have two ones in the truth table that was our we're going to take our, our y zero and it was up here we had a one and a one and then a zero and zero let's take a look at that so we got zero 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 one one zero and one one and those are all our, our possibilities and then we got one one zero for the outputs now let's do this let's Let's make a square here and let's divide it up like so into four quadrants and let's make the columns correspond to the value of A. It can be 0 or 1 and the rows correspond to the value of B. It can be 0 or 1. So this is going to be just a different way to represent this truth table graphically. So when A is 0 and B is 0, that's here, we have a 1. So we'll put a 1 in this square. When A is 0 and B is 1, we get a 1. So A is 0 and B is 1. So that's down here. There's a 1. And the other two cases, when A is 1, well, then we get zeros. So there is the truth table represented graphically. And this is something we call... A Carnot map and we'll just for shorthand we'll just call this a K map it's a way to graphically represent a truth table now you can see the nice thing about this is that I can see blocks now um, here are all these ones are contained in this block And what is that block? Well, that block corresponds to A is equal to 0. So I can see that that logic function corresponds when A is equal to 0, Y0 is equal to 1. That would mean that Y0 would be not A, the inverse of A. Right? If A is 0, then Y0 is 1. If A is 1, and y0 is 0. So I can graphically, instead of having to go up here and do this and say, well, we're going to factor out the a prime, and then that becomes a prime and b or not b and b or not b is 1. So you got a and 1, uh, not a and 1. So that's just not a. Right? Instead of doing it algebraically, we can do it graphically, do the algebra graphically. Right? So we can just see this structure here, this this column corresponds to a is equal to zero anytime a is zero either where, where b is zero or b is one well then y zero is equal to one okay so that is a graphical way to do logic function minimization And it's very useful up to four variables. This is with two variables. We can do it with three variables or four variables. And then after that, it gets very difficult to, to draw it on a flat surface. Uh, but we're going to go through and just look at the other cases that we had here for the cases where we have two ones and two zeros in our truth table. Okay, so let's, let's look at those cases. So we had the one we just did, uh, y0. So we're going to just draw all these six now. Okay, so we're going to have zero, one, zero, one, here's A and B. And this is the case we already looked at. All right, so we can just say, we can circle those, and that's A is equal to zero. That means Right, this is the case where we have y0 is equal to not a. Uh, then the, the next column, the y1 column, there we have uh, 1, 0, 1, 0. That looks like this. 1, 0, 1, 
zero. Okay, and this is the, these are the A values and the B values. And there we can see that we have a block that looks like so. And so we can identify that block, right? This is the Y, Y1 now, and we can see here Y0 is equal to not A. And here Y1 is, well, when is Y1 equal to 1? When B is equal to 0. So not B is equal to 1. So Y1 is equal to not B. And then we can come over here and do that again. And let's go to Y2. Mm, that's here, 1, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1. Here's, here are the A values and the B values. And this is Y2. And we don't have a block, right? These, these ones are not, uh, don't form a, a row or a column, right? They're disjoint. So that tells us we can't reduce that logic function any farther than we had up here. Not A and not B or A and B. And let's continue on. Let's look now at uh, Y3. 0, 1, 1, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0. So this is A is 0, A is 1, B is 0, B is 1. And that one also, the two ones do not form either a row or a column. So that can't be reduced. And so that's Y3 here. Not A and B or A and not B. That's the exclusive or. And then we come over here. And we're going to look now at y, y4. y4 goes 0, 1, 0, 1. We put it on a K map. 0, um, uh, let's see, y4 is going to be a 0, 1, 0, 1. There's B and A. And we see that in that case, we do have the two ones combined into a single row. That row corresponds to B is equal to 1. So that's why we can say that Y4 is just equal to B. Okay, and that's what we got up here with the factoring. And then finally, for Y5, which is 0, 0, 1, 1, Zero, 1, 0, 1, and this is A, and this is B. So uh, what did we say Y5 was? Uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so when 0, 0, 1, 1, and we can see in that case, we get a column. And that column corresponds to A is equal to 1. Whenever A is equal to 1, then this is Y, Y5. Y5 is equal to 1. So Y5 is just equal to A. Y5 is 1 whenever A is 1. And again, that's what we found up here with factoring. So this, these K-maps are just graphical ways to do this switching algebra, or this Boolean algebra, factoring and reductions and things. We can do it graphically. Very, very useful. Now, let's look at the truth table or y equals a or b. Okay, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. y is 1 if a is 1 or b is 1, and not exclusively so. Either or both are 1. So that would mean the only time y would be 0 would be here, and for every other row, 1 or both of a B are equal to 1. So there's the, the OR operation. Now let's put that on a K map. So 
So here's going to be A, and we're going to put the values of 0 and 1. Here will be B, 0 and 1. So we're going to go, let's see, we go A is 0, and then B is 0, and then B is 1. We go 0, 1, 1, 1. So 0, 1, 1, 1. Y is 0, which is A or B, only when A is 0 and B is 0. All right. Now let's try to do this uh, reduction idea here. Um, but let's f first start off by just looking at this and then go saying, oh, you know what? I could just identify each of these blocks and a logic function corresponding to each of those blocks, and then it would just be the or of those three logic functions. Okay, so I could come over here, and I could say this block is when A is 0 and B is 1. So that's not A and B. A is 0, so not A is 1, and B is 1. Over here, A and 1 are both 0, so that's A and B. And up here, B is 0 and A is 1. That's A and not B. So B is 0, then not B is 1. And then I would have the or of that. It's this or this or this. Those are the three cases where Y here is equal to 1. So we could write that y equals not a and b or a and not b or a and b. Uh, but of course we know that it's it's equal to a or b. Right? So this is just a different way to write this same function. Now of course this function is not nearly as simple as that function. That's okay. Let's see how we could then, starting with this simple case where we just identify each one of these cells and write a logic function corresponding to that cell. That corresponds, each cell corresponds to a row in the truth table. We write a logic function for each one of those rows or each one of the cells and then just or them together. This or this or this is the, are the cases where y is equal to 1. Now, what we could do is we could say, come over here, and we could, we could identify those two ones form a column. And that column would be the case when A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 0 or 1. We don't care. So A is equal to 1. Whenever A is equal to 1, we're in that column. So that would just be the logic function A. When A is 1, that's 1. When A is 0, that's over here. It would not be 1. So we could take, put those two cells together into the single logic function A and then or this single cell over here, not A and B. Now we know that this k-map corresponds to this truth table, which we derive from the logic function A or B. So this is equal to A or B. And we then have this identity. A or B equals A or not A and B. Let's see why this would be true. Well, if A is 1, then certainly this, is, this thing is 1, because 1 or anything is, is 1. And likewise over here, 1 or anything is 1. If A is 0, this is 0, this is 0, then here, if B is 1, then this whole thing would be 1. You'd have 0 or 1. Over here, A is 0. Not A would be 1 then automatically, and then this would just be 1 and B. So when A is equal to 0, this thing is just 1 and B, or equal to B, of course, and then you've got 0 or the value of B. Right? 0 or B is just equal to B. So... You can see that this, this expression is 1 if A is 1, or if A is 0, if B is 1. And likewise for this expression. So you see the equality of these two. So here we have an identity. A or not A and B is equal to A or B. Okay, and we can get that from just looking at the K-map. And the equ equ equivalence of these different logic functions we can get by combining these cells in different ways. Now, 
That approach required us to, to show the equality of these two expressions, to, to do a little bit of verbal algebra here, talking about the different cases where a is 1 or 0, and et cetera. But another thing we could do is just look at this and uh, also see that we have not only a column, we have a row there. Now, what is that row? That row is, corresponds to when b is equal to 1. Those are all the cases where b is equal to 1. So this row is just b. So we can also say, in this case, y is equal to, well, either we could be in the a is equal to 1 column, a, or we could be in the b row, a or b. So we can see that directly. Now, in doing that, of course, these two, th this row and this column, overlap. They both included this same cell here. And that's perfectly OK. Right? This is the idea that uh, right, you could have both of these true. A and B could both be true. This could be 1 or 1, which is, which is 1, just like 1 or 0 is 1, and 0 or 1 is 1. OK, so it's perfectly OK in doing these minimizations to have the different rows and columns overlap. No problem at all. Now, using this KMAP process, we can derive some important results. Let's take a look at the following KMAPs. Okay, so here's 0 and 1. These are the values of A. And here's 0 and 1. These are the values of B. And let's look at the KMAP that has 0, 0, 0. One. This is the logic function a and b. Why? Because it's 1 only when a is 1 and b is 1. And for all other cases, if either of a or b or both are 0, then it's 0. So this is the a and b. This is what it looks like on a k-map. Now let's invert that. Let's take a and b and invert it, the not a and b. This is the NAND operation. Everywhere there's a 0, we put a 1. And where there's a 1, we put a 0. OK, again, this is, these are the a and the b values. Now let's do this uh, key map trick here. Let's identify this column and Let's identify this row. It's OK that they overlap. OK, so what is that column? That column is when a is equal to 0. So that's not a. Or we can be in the row. And the row corresponds to when b is equal to 0. So that's or, not b. OK, so what we've just shown is that Not A and B, the NAND operation, is equivalent to the OR of the negated values of A and B, not A or not B. Now here's another important result. Let's do another version of this. Here's A. Here's B. Let's look at A or B. Now, this is 1 whenever A or B or both are equal to 1. So here, B is equal to 1, so those are true. And then here, A is 1. The only time A or B is 0 is when A is 0 and B is 0. So it would look like that. Now, let's do this same reduction idea, where we're going to negate the A or B. So this is now the nor operation, not or, not a or b, or the nor of a and b. OK, so here's 0, 1, and 0, 1. We just negate the entries of this k-map. This is 1, 0, 0, 0. And now we see that there's only one non-zero cell right there. And so here we can say that y, in this case, would be equal to what? Well, 
A is equal to zero and B is equal to zero. So it would be, this would be not A and not B. But it's also, we said, not A or B. So this is equal to the inverse of A or B. So the nor operation, and this is the and on the inverted A and B values. So we get these two identities now that look like this. A and B inverted, so not A and B, which is the NAND operation is equal to the or of the inverted variables. And then the second case, the inversion of A or B, that's the nor, not or, well, that's equal to the and of the inverted variables. These can be, as we'll see, very useful um, in implementing circuits with logic gates. And these are called the De Morgan's laws. I guess it's a capital M. Uh, the De Morgan laws or formulas or identities. And again, we'll see as we go through the course, these can be very useful. Uh, this ability to convert an AND operation to an OR uh, or an OR operation to an AND. Now, using these ideas as KMAP uh, representation and to, to get different expressions for the logic function, we can come up with various two variable identities. And here are some useful ones A or B is equal to B or A. Just Write the true table or make the k-map. A and B is equal to B and A. Right, these are these correspond right to the uh, commutative property and uh, for addition and multiplication, but they're for the or and the and operation. And then one we already showed was A or not A and B is A or B. And then another one is A, or A and B is equal to A. Okay, so these are some useful identities that will that are listed in the notes, and that sometimes we can refer to 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 reduce various logic expressions, and they can all be represented on a K map. Let's look at this uh, this last one here. Well, one thing we could do here is just do factorization. Factor out the common A, so this would be A times 1 plus B. And that's A and 1 plus B, right? So it's actually not times. That would be in normal algebra. In Boolean algebra, it would be A and 1 or B. All right, A and 1 or B. But 1 or B, you know, that's just equal to 1, right? So regardless, B can be 1 or 0. 1 or anything is, is 1. So this is just equal to A and 1, which is just equal to A. Okay, But if we did this on a K-map, it would look like this. This is A. And this is B. And now let's look at A or A and B. Okay, so a, well, that's, that would be true whenever A is equal to 1. So we'd have a 1 there and a 1 there. That's A. And how about A and B? That's 1 when A is 1 and B is 1. So that would be this guy right here. All right, so all right, this is this whole column is equal to A. And then... This cell is A and B. So if we combine those, right, we can e either be 
A or A and B, well, we can see that the A and B is redundant. Because if, if A is true, then we're in this column and the function is equal to 1. And then it doesn't matter whether B is 1 or 0 because we're going to be in this column. So we can see that uh, there we've got A or A and B is equal to just A. Right, just this column. Right, this guy is just is redundant. This is this case where we have two terms in the logic function which which each give you a one when we're in the cell. So the one of them can just be erased because it's already contained in this column right there. And you can derive other identities and, and check these other identities by looking at them on a K-map. Now, let's introduce the idea, and this will become very important for us later when we talk about larger logic functions, logic functions with more than two inputs. The idea of, we'll call a sum of products and a product of sums. Now, a product that would play on the fact that this AND operation looks like a, a product and the OR operation looks like a sum. Okay, so let's look at here a truth table. We'll, we'll put a row here, and here's the value of A, and here's the value of B, and then here would be Y. So here would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. We'll call this row 0, row 1, row 2, and row 3. Okay, this is just a, a convenient way to just refer to one of these rows by a single number. And we'll say y equals 1 if and only if the following condition is true. Let's see here. When do we get a 1 here? If a is 0, then not a is 1. And b is 0, so not b is 1. So not a and not b. If that's equal to 1, then we get a 1 in that row. And that, that expression is 0 for all other rows. Because it's only 1 when a is 0 and b is 0. Next row down, a is 0 and b is 1. So not a is 1 and b is 1. Next row down, a is 1 and b is 0. So a is 1 and B is 0, so not B is equal to 1. So A and not B is equal to 1. That's true for that row and false for all other rows. And finally, for row 3 here, that's when A is 1 and B is 1. So that's when you have A and B is equal to 1. So those are called products. Uh, okay, so they're really AND operations, but they look like products, so we just call them products. And now, if we have, for example, say a logic function, that look like this, 1, 0, 0, 1. We could write this and just go through for each, play, each row where the logic function is 1 and write that product there and then do an OR with all the rows where we have a 1. So we have this first row, that would be not A and not B. And then we have this third row, that would then be OR A and b. So that would be the logic function for this truth table. And this is called a canonical sum. Um, notice what that is telling us, right? Any truth table, and this would be true no matter how many input variables we have, we just have many more rows, we can always write a function that turns on is 1 at only that row as a product of, of the different logic variables, and they may or may not be inverted or negated. And then we can just do a sum of those. Right? So that's called the canonical sum. So we can, what does that tell you? Immediately, that tells you any logic function. K 
can be implemented. with not and and or operations. Those are the only three operations you need. Now we may use different operations like the exclusive or and other things like that for convenience, but in principle any truth table, any logic function can be implemented just with these three operations. Well, for example, if you have a computer, as we'll talk about later, a computer is a, is called a sequential logic device. Uh, it goes through a series of clock steps, and at each step, each uh, transition of the clock, it implements some truth table, which we'll call a combinational logic function. And then it stores some information and then does another operation, and we'll study sequential logic later. And what this means is you can you can build any computer just using not and and or operations and then some memory devices and uh, clocks and a, a few other things that we'll talk about later. So this is extremely powerful. Now it doesn't mean we want to just use, for example, canonical sums to represent a function because we may be able to reduce this and rep represent it in a different way in terms of using things like XNOR and other types of operations may just be more convenient, but we can. We don't have to use anything except these three operations, not, and, and, or. Okay, that's incredibly powerful. Now these types of operations here, these products, where you have a product of all the variables, and they may or may not be inverted, uh, is called a min term. Okay, and so this, it says that any logic function can be written as a canonical sum of min terms. Min, each min term corresponds to the logic function having a value of one for that particular row. Okay, and these are called min terms because they're one in only the one row and then they're zero in all the other, all the other rows. So not A and not B is one in this row and is zero in all the other rows. A and B is one in this third row and zero in all the other rows. So, we can now express this canonical sum in a more compact form. Why? Uh, let's first write it out in full. Not A and B or A and B. Uh, so, not A and not B or A and B. We can write that formally as a sum over all values of A and B. That just means a sum over all the rows in the truth table. And we'll say m for the min term, and then just put the rows where the function is equal to 1. So that would be row 0 and row 3. So that is really the more formal way to re represent the canonical sum. And it's just a listing of the rows of the truth table for which the function is 1. And that's called a sum of products. So these min terms are product, have product forms. Now another way to represent a, uh, a truth table, a logic function. Uh, let's write this out here. Here's row A, B, and we'll say, we'll look at expressions that make Y equal to zero if and only if we're in that particular row. So for the min terms, we have expressions that are one in that row and zero for all other rows. Now, in this case, we're going to make an expression that is zero for that particular row and one for all other rows. So here we got A and B are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And this is row 0, 1, 2, and 3. So let's see. Uh, what would be an expression that would be 0 for this row 0, but 1 for all other rows? Well, A is 0 and B is 0. So we could write this, A plus B is equal to zero. That's true for this row because both A and B are zero. So the or of two zeros is just zero. For all other rows, either A or B or both are one, and so the or would be one. Okay, so that expression is zero only for that row. 
for the next row down, let's see, now A is 0, so not A. Uh, I'm sorry, so A is, is 0. And B is 1, so not B is 0. So this has to have the form 0 or 0, which would be equal to 0. And for any other row, one or the other of these will change from 0 to 1, or maybe both will, and this expression would be 1. Okay, so this is 0 for only that row. Next one down, A is 1, B is 0. So not A is 0, or, and B is 0. And finally, A and B are both 1, so not A is 0, or not B is 0. So that's equal to 0 only for that row right there. These expressions here, these, these sums, these OR expressions, we call these max terms. Now up here, these products, were, we call them min terms because they're, they're 1 only for a single row and they're 0 for all the other rows. These are 0 for one row and they're 1 for all the other rows. All right. So um, let's take a look here. So let's suppose our truth table is a 1 in row 0, a 0 in row 1, 0 in row 2, and a 1 in row 3. And this is our y function. Well, then we can write y as a product of sums. We're going to write it as a product of all of the max terms where we have 0 for that particular max term. So here, a or not b is 0 in this row. And then times, or and, for this row, where there's another 0, we have not A or B. So that's our logic function. Notice, when is this equal to 0? When we're either in the row with max term A or not B, that's row 1, or in the row with max term not A or B, that's row 2. And for any other row, row 0 or row 1, both of these are 1. And this is then 1 and 1, or 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So this is representing the logic function as a product of sums. And what we would do formally, we would write this as, use the pi, capital P, pi, uh, for a product. Pi over all values of A and B of the max term, capital M, max terms for rows 1 and 2. Those are the rows in which, which the truth table has zeros. So that is the canonical um, canonical product of sums. So we have two ways to express formally a truth table. We can do this canonical uh, sum of products, right, sum of the min terms, or this product of sums, where the uh, the, the max terms appear in the, the products. And those are the places that correspond to the rows where the logic function is zero. Why would you use one or the other of these? Well, if we get a, a really large truth table with many, many input variables and many, many rows, suppose the truth table only has a few ones in it and mostly zeros. Well, then this canonical sum would be more convenient because you would only have a few rows where you had these min terms. Conversely, if um, the, the function mostly had ones and only a few zeros, then this canonical product of sums, in terms of these max terms, well, you'd only have a few max terms, only a few rows where you, the logic function is zero. So you'd have fewer uh, terms in your uh, factors in your product. Okay, So you might get a simpler expression just based on the number of ones and zeros in the truth table. Let's look at an example. Um, what is the truth table corresponding to the canonical sum? Sum over A and B, so that tells you you've got two input variables. Min terms in rows 0 and 2. All right, so here's rows. Here are the values of A and B. And here's the value of Y. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. One. This is row 0, row 1, row 2, 
in row 3. And we have min terms in rows 0 and 2. So here's row 0. That means there's a 1 in row 0 and in row 2. And the other rows then would be zeros. Okay. So that is then the sum of products form. If we actually wrote that out, what would it look like? Well, what's the min term for row 0? A is 0, B is 0. So that's not A and not B. And then for row 2, so we have OR, and we're in row 2, A is 1 and B is 0. So that's A and not B. Now we can look at that on a K map. Are the A values and the B values. So, so for A is equal to zero, let's see, we got one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, and we can look at that and see that all the ones are contained in this row. And that means, well, this is the row where B is equal to zero, so this is Y is equal to not B. Now we could have got that algebraically from this expression. We've got a common factor of not B, so we could write this as not B, and then we have not A or A. Uh, but that's just not B and 1. A or not A is always true. <laughs> if A is 0, then not A is true. Uh, if A is 1, then A is true, or equal to 1. So A or not A the identity is that's equal to 1, and then b and 1 is uh, not b and 1 is just not b, right? And so that's algebraically doing that, and here's doing it graphically with the k map. Let's look at the uh, product of sums. So this is going to be a product over the different rows. And let's see, we're, we're going to now code where we have zeros. So we have zeros in the first row here. So that's going to be the max term corresponding to row 1 and the max term corresponding to row 3. And what does that look like? What's the max term corresponding to row 1? Well, this is you got to write an expression that is 0 for this row and 1 for all other rows. So it's going to be an OR expression. So A is 0, so this would be A, OR, and B is 1, so what would be 0 would be not B. So this is 0, and that's 0 for this row. So 0 or 0 is 0. For all other rows, 1 or both of these is 1, and then anything or 1 is, is 1. Okay, so there is your first max term. And then you have that times and the next max term, which is for row 3. So that's where A is 1 and B is 1. So what's, a, what's an OR expression that is 0 for that row? Uh, a is 1, so not A is 0, or B is 1, so not B is 0. So for that row and that row only, not A or not B is 0. Okay, and there's your canonical product. And so this product is 1 everywhere except for this first row, and this product is 1 everywhere for the third row. So the product is 1 everywhere except the first and the third rows. Okay, so that leaves the, the 0th and the second rows where it's one, okay? Now, we could do a little bit of algebra here. Let's expand this out. A and not A, or A and not B, or not B and not A, or not B and not B. Okay, A and not A, that's always zero, right? You can't be, A can't be one and not A also be one, right? Can't be, can't be both one and zero. A and not B, uh, not B and not A. So let's look at this, this expression uh, here. What are we going to do? We have a, a common not B factor. So not B and, that leaves A and not A. And then over here, not B and not B, that's just not B. That's, that's true if not B is true, because then it's one and one. OK? 
Okay. Now, again, we have an identity. A or not A, that's always true. Because one of these is always going to be 1. And so then that just becomes, this is 0 or, and then this is just not B or not B, which is just not B. Which, of course, is what we got up here. So different ways to analyze a truth table or a logic function. And we've introduced the idea of K maps, Carnot maps, and how we can use those to minimize logic functions, to get simpler expressions for the logic functions by identifying groups of ones in the truth table. And then we came up also with this formality of writing an arbitrary truth table in terms of a canonical sum, like this, a sum of min terms, or a canonical product. Uh, like, like uh, sorry, where's our canonical product? Uh, like this, product of max terms. Okay, so lots of different ways to express a logic function. Which one is preferred? It depends on the application, and that's something we're going to be studying as we go through this course.